Okay, believe it or not, this is day three, and I have never seen my recreation pond as low as this, because we've never had it this low, because we've never done a clean out, a draining clean to this pond. But because we started doing that one, and we were using this water to wash it down. We're like, you know what? We've already started. Let's just do this. So what's really cool is Ed and Brian talked about putting a beach area in there. We're gonna repair some of the underwater jets that over 12 years with old technology aren't still working. The fish are wondering what is going on. We're gonna catch all those fish today. And then we're gonna use some of the water that we just pumped out of this one to pump back and just wash this down. Believe it or not, that bottom looks exactly like the koi ponds that I saw, the koi grow up ponds that I saw over in Japan. Pan. It's actually very healthy biofilm that's on there right now. So we're not going to really scrub that off. We're just going to get some of the major areas that, you know, leaves and debris and stuff like that that have come in and, uh, you know, just literally give this thing a nice, fresh, clean water and everything else that's been going on. There's a lot of lilies. The guys are right now moving the lily pots out and they're going to replant and fertilize the lily pots that have not been worked on in years. So we're just draining this one out. You can see Noah down there working on hooking up one of the 10,000 and clean out pumps and we're filling that one up and of course it's already being repopulated by the geese and uh doing what geese do but one clean out in 12 years for a 600,000 gallon pond i'll do this every 12 years i guess plus it's fun and it's something to do during quarantine i love my job <laughs> so brian what do you think pretty amazing with a bunch of kids Getting it done. All right, you ready? Yeah, we're letting Brian do the ceremonial first fish. Big guy. Nice. Woo! <laughs> All right, here we go. Be free. You're wow. in your... Well, look at how much better he looks in a clean pond. <laughs> This is where it's nice to have uh, friends. This is um, Ryan Stroop, who's Steve Stroop, my longtime buddy's son, and he drove in oh, about 12 hours with this. Wait till you see what's in this cargo hold. One guess what it is, Jonathan, what do you think? Giants. Oh, he kind of gave it away. I thought you might thought it was like a giant turtle or something. Da -da -da -da. Woo hoo! Look at that, we've even got some blooms. Nice. Well, how many did you bring in? 250 on the lilies. 48 on the marginal, 50 small lotus, and 25 large lotus. And you can tell Ryan is from New York City. <laughs> All right, guys, start to work. Put it in the handicap spot because no one can come with COVID-19 anyway. He doesn't even want to break. There's Blake, my son, some of the guys on the football team, Noah that works here, and all your plants, and my even my nephew. These plants came all the way from Alabama, Davis Creek Nurseries. Ryan Stroop brought them up. How long ago did I tell you to get these? Two days. Two days, and he was able to get all these plants harvested for me. I said, as long as I'm doing my pond clean out, I might as well get my spring order for plants at the same time, which is a few weeks early, but I'd rather have them and get them done. Ready for water garden weekend. We just gotta figure out how to have it this year. Getting them wet. Look at all those beauties. Nice. All right, so we're separating the goldfish from the golden orbs and uh, putting the fish back in. Go okay. repopulate. That's a golden orb right there. All right, here's the assembly line process. So we're taking them out. There's a couple plants per lily, isn't there? Yeah, for most, most of them would have multiplied in two or three. Yeah, so we're gonna put two of these in each pot. When do you put the NutriCoat in? Right it's now? All, it's already been put in okay. between the dirt. Layers. Put the NutriCoat in, which is the time release fertilizer. And then these are gonna be covered with rock and gravel and put into the pond that we just cleaned. Doesn't take long for wildlife to come back out. So satisfied. And it's pretty much filled up now. All right, this is pretty cool. We have the fish in about a foot of water down here, and we are going to push them this way, and we're gonna get them into that cave right over there that we're setting up a net to. So the other side is already netted, and we are going to capture them in that net, in that cave, and then right in the middle, there's a hole, and we're going to uh, pull them out of that hole, run them all the way up to those tanks, put some air stones in them, and we will be good to go. <laughs> There's always a first for something. I love my job. There's the tanks, there's the fish. We've got about a foot of water down there. We're gonna push the fish this way 
and we're gonna capture them in the tube that connects the two ponds together. There's an underwater cave over there. So we're gonna throw that net down when we push them over there, and then we're gonna pull them out of the center of there and run them all the way back up to those two tanks there. Go ahead, Jonathan. He's going into the underwater tunnel. I think, uh, Brett, you want to go in there and push him down? And then we'll do a chain gang all the way up to there. Brett, go on the other side. <laughs> Let's see the fish. Come on. Come out with some fish. I bet you that no one has ever fished like this before in the history of fishing. <laughs> no fish over there. And here we go. We got the first fish. We got the first fish. That's a nice one. Good job. Go get another one, buddy. Look at that. What do we got in here? We got bluegill. We got carp. Woo -hoo -hoo. Get out of here. Everybody's even a crayfish in there. <laughs> there they go. This is a unique kind of fishing. Fishing in the cave at Aqualand. What do we got here? Beauty. All righty. Thank you. Yep. Okay, here we go. Ta-da! Here you go, buddy. Oh, a nice sake. I can actually categorize my fish for once. Beautiful. All right, one man out. And we got Noah down here. Hello. You got some fish? Just some bluegill for now, but we're gonna get some more. Okay. Oh God, I need to stand There's a bunch of koi in here. I overflowed a little bit, and of course the ducks come right in. <laughs> it's almost up to the street. But this pond is officially clean, ready for the waterfall to be turned on but we're gonna use this water now to clean that pond. All right, it's looking good. I got all the kids down there moving all the rocks. That's where the beach area is going. The guy in red with yellow, his name is Tony. He's from Naperville. He saw this on Facebook and said, can I come help you clean your pond? I'm a lawyer and I'm bored. And I'm like, yes, you can, buddy. You can see some hydrostatic pressure in there and everything is just so saturated out here. Looking pretty clean though. Well, probably by the end of the day, we'll have this thing clean. So four days for both ponds, not bad with a bunch of high school help. That kid is a junior or senior in high school. He's gonna be playing football at Benedict because that is a heavy pipe, washing the uh, rocks down. I'm pumping out of the lily pond now, and then I fill the lily pond up with the retention pond water over there. I love my job, I'm having a blast, and I can't wait to uh, reveal the fish in this pond when it's all clean. <laughs> Not a bad day. So we actually had worms in between the two liners. And what did you do with these worms? I <laughs> something down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I think your little cousin punked you, Blake. They found the one area that's cleaned out here. Born up on the roof and come all the way down and you can see the other nests that are up there. Life at Aqualand. <laughs> Okay, it's Monday, day five of the clean out. And we are transferring the fish from this tank to this tank because we need to create an access area for our beach going in here because this whole area is gonna be a beach. And in order to get through here, we have to remove the plants because we're gonna be coming in here with a uh, dingo, Toro dingo, with all the sand. We got 15 yards of sand, Ed? Uh, I think it's 20. We can't bring it over here, so the only way to get access, right, is to rip that out. Rip that stuff out. We're gonna grab some plywood. We're gonna do some plywood across the, uh, the patio over here, moving this tank to allow us access. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to do a couple different things. We're gonna, obviously we wanna create the sand beach, but we also have some challenges. We've had some bubbles under this little corner over here since this was built. I failed right at the very beginning during construction. Mm -hmm. I have a drain under everything except this one ah. corner. Mm -hmm. This was an area that was dry, but once we put the patio in and started building up these berms, we're getting water under this corner. You can see that big fold there. What happens is water gets under there, and because this liner, you can't pull it taut, it builds up with water. So what I want to do is pull the gravel off of there. We're going to take a piece of the heavy-duty geotextile fabric. We're going to bridge across that entire big bubble area. That stuff does not stretch. Mm -hmm. That stuff's super, super strong. And when we put in 18 inches of uh, sand on top of that, that's going to be enough weight spread out over a big area. That should, <laughs> that should alleviate the problem. I want to do that down there as well. So what we're going to do, clean this gravel off, put in our sandbags. We're going to go up for that big rock. 
kind of an irregular shape and then all the way over to the other big rock with these geotextile sandbags. That's gonna create kind of a bumper area. Then from behind those, we'll fill in with all that sand. We also may tackle this little problem over here. We've uh, had some pushing um, ice, you name it, all that stuff kind of beaten up on this edge over here. So we're gonna try to solve that problem as well. And then it's gonna be a really cool look out here. 12 year old pond, needs some fixing. Yep. Okay guys, got all the fish out. Now we're gonna move this container back here and refill it with some of the water from up there and Look we got a crayfish. Look at that. Woohoo! <laughs> and it begins. The sand. Making the sandbags. And there it is. The first load of sand that we're moving from all the way back there where the kids are making sandbags. And it comes through here, clear it out, clear it out a path. For the dingo to get through, hopefully we won't have to take out that plant and then go right there and dump it in for the beach. Come off of here with a sandbag, right to this rock. From here, we're gonna go right in front of all of this, right on this side of these rocks to here, and then to there. There's our labor force today. I'm enjoying the fact that that is leading them today, but we're gonna put the beach area right in here. End of the day, we'll have a full beach here, and we're starting with the, with the heavy lifters, right, Killer? Yes. And just like that, the beach area is done. So the pond will be cleaned and ready to go. Eight days ago, we drained the other pond and just a couple days later, started working on this one. But that beach area is absolutely mint. That is gonna be fantastic walking right off the bricks into that beach and then just go into our recreation pond. <laughs> I love it. Yeah.